On today's badge cam lesson, I don't know whether to call this a goat rodeo or a Taliban wedding ceremony. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I am your host as always, John Correa. Getting better is our favorite former Fed, Mike, and he is with us remotely. Today's video comes to us from Buffalo, New York. You're gonna see this one start with a, a, a traffic infraction here. These officers are investigating because the guy's got too dark a window tint or something. She's quite nice, but boy, is it gonna get goofy. Hello. Good, pulling over because of the tents on the car. You got your license on you? One second, okay? Mr. Bell, your your registration has been suspended since uh, uh, February for an insurance lapse. Did you have some sort of lapse, or did you switch insurance or anything? Okay, yeah, your reg is suspended right now. It's not it's not really a big deal. Uh, we're just gonna get well, yeah, I gotta have you step out, and then we'll work with you and go from there. Okay. But yeah, just coming down here to chill. Okay. All right, no big deal. You're on what? I'm on crutches. Like I'm oh shit! <laughs> Was it your leg? Yeah, I got shot. Oh. You got shot two weeks ago? Oh, in 2012. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Okay. Um, I'll just have you step out slowly then, I guess. Are you able? Take your time. Take yeah, it's not. Knew that was fucking coming. Knew that was fucking coming. Fucking knew it. Knew that was fucking coming. Watch out. Here. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you, 
Shots fired, Rio. Shots fired. Chief of police said 16 officers fired their firearms. He has no idea how many rounds were fired. Our bad guy was hit twice. Three officers were hit, one of them by the bad guy. Two officers were hit by friendly fire from other officers. And now our perp is facing, I think, five, uh, five charges involving attempted murder of a police officer, a host of other stuff. And the officers who were shot are supposedly making a full recovery. Okay, Mike, I I'm just gonna do something I've never done here before. To me, I don't even think it's really worthwhile to walk back through this one because, um, I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, and language being what it is, this is one of the biggest shit shows I've ever seen on the channel. This is an epic cluster, John, the likes of which I have personally never seen. Um, I don't know if this is sort of the defund the police thing coming home to roost in part, maybe, because this looks like a complete lack of training, a complete lack of oversight on the part of the, the um, you know, higher ups at this department. I'm not sure what happened here. You know, it started with her not following policy by not engaging in a pursuit. The pursuit was unauthorized from the beginning. Now, I know people are going to say, well, it turns out he was a bad guy. It turns out he had a gun and he shot at the police. That's beside the point. It's not unlike when the police do an illegal search. Everything they find in that search is not admissible. That's kind of a rule in law enforcement is we don't go outside of policy. Policy is our friend. It's a warm blanket we wrap ourselves in um, to stay on the right side of the law, both um, uh, criminally and civilly. Now, I don't know if any of these officers are facing disciplinary charges internally, but I certainly think some of them should be because this was completely out of control in every way that I can imagine it being out of control. Well, and listen, if you go and you read the news stories, right? So there was a commander who called the pursuit off. And then there was somebody who was higher up who said, no, no, there were shots fired. Go. And I want you to go. And I want you to continue the pursuit. So there's like some disagreement here. I just see stuff. Now, if, again, you go read the news stories, the officers, uh, you know, uh, the, the district attorney's office said there was nothing criminal that happened here. And I agree with that. I don't think there was anything that was malicious or intended or those things. But you just see all the houses in the background and the, the, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of rounds fired from a moving vehicle at a moving vehicle. Both of those are outside of policy, right? So, you know, you say, okay, you don't fire at a moving vehicle unless they are assaulting you with something other than the vehicle. And, and he was at points, but firing through your windshield, firing out the window of your moving vehicle at another moving vehicle. Uh, you know, uh, firing as he's blazing by and, and no hope in the universe of making hits on that and endangering the whole public. I just look at this and I go, my God, that whole department needs to get fired and retrained. Yeah, it's not good. I think um, to your point, John, about whether this was you know criminal or, or not on the part of the officers, I think is almost irrelevant. If you're if your you know child got hit through you know through a window uh, by one of these errant shots, or you got hit through a window, or something else terrible happened, some other calamity, uh, I don't think it would matter to you um, whether this was a you know a, a policy violation or a law violation. Um, this sort of thing, uh, you know, we we covered a video back a while back about uh, New Mexico. There was, I believe, it was a state trooper or a deputy who was just going bananas, firing through his windshield, and these sorts of things. Um, they, they tend to, once the officers see this in a training video or whatever, they tend to want to do what they saw in the training video. And I, I don't know where this whole shooting through the windshield thing started, but there were very few of the shots taken that I observed on this tape that were what I would call judicious. I mean, part of the, 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 the when you, firearms instructor signs off on an officer, on a law enforcement officer going out into the field with a, with a loaded gun, being trusted with that by the general public, Part of that is, do I think this person is judicious? Do I think they're sensible with the gun? Not just can they hit a target, not just can they aim and squeeze the trigger and use their sights properly. Those things are important, but those things are secondary to not, not can I shoot or could I possibly shoot, but should I shoot right now? So many of these shots were, in my opinion, looked like they were so dangerous and so ill-advised that I think it's kind of, it kind of washes out any, uh, you know, any, any fear they may have had of getting shot or whatever. This just was over, as over the top as I've ever seen. I, it literally felt to me like a game of duck hunt, for gracious sakes. It's like, you know, let's just start winging shots. It was just desk pop central. And then, so the guy wrecks up, and then as he finally wrecks his car up, now all of a sudden, you got officers that have literally got his car surrounded, and they are firing with each other as a backstop. And, and you got to think, wait a minute, if I see, okay, maybe I do see a deadly threat, a guy who has fired 16 rounds at police, and he's definitely, you know, done that and, and threatened the entire community. 
But when I miss, what happens to that bullet? And, and listen, there are two officers here who took friendly fire. There are two officers here whose lack of discipline, whose reckless negligence resulted in a, a shooting of their fellow officer. And I don't know that they're going to get to find out who that is because, I mean, again, 16 officers fired well over 100 rounds here. I think I, I was just counting them up and I'm talking, you know, 150 rounds plus here. But, but, and I don't know that we'll ever get to know how many. The point is, I mean, running through reloads and those things, firing with officers in the backstop, and then running up to the car, pointing guns at him with, again, officers just on the other side. It, it, it seemed like adrenaline got the best of everyone here, and there was just literally no thought to, are we endangering ourselves? Right. Recently, you and I covered a video. We caught a lot of heck in the comments section. It was in Denver. And there was uh, two officers in different positions, different vantage points, different shooting positions. And there was a bad guy who had pulled a gun out. Turns out he was tossing it. There was no way for the initial officer to know that in the moment. Um, human performance being what it is, it took his brain a half a second longer to, to process the fact that it was being tossed. We caught a lot of heck in the comments because people were saying, well, what are they supposed to do? What they're supposed to do is rely and fall back onto the highest level of their training. What they're supposed to do is control their emotions control themselves, use their training, communicate, only shoot when it's the right thing to do, when it's judicious, when it's um, the thing that you have to do in the moment because you have to pull the trigger. In that Denver case, you and I both agreed that that shot was probably contagious fire. You probably shot because his partners were shooting. In this case, I expect, you should expect, your, your law enforcement officers, professional LEOs in the United States, you should expect them to engage their brain slow things down a little bit enough to take a moment to go, okay, I know I'm mad at this guy, right? I know he shot at my partner. I know he's endangering the public with this dangerous pursuit, but is my pulling the trigger right now going to do more harm than good? Is it going to create more of, of a danger to the public, to the people in those homes, to my partners, to whomever, than holding back? Another person was mad at me because I said, Going home at the end of your shift is not the most important thing in law enforcement. The most important thing in law enforcement is to protect the public, to protect the innocent. You're out there with a vest. You're out there with a gun, with pepper spray, with a cruiser, with a radio, with air cover. You have all these things, and the purpose of those things is to equip you and to train you to protect the public, the general public. And so if your actions are now creating more of a harm than a good, you need to reassess. And it's one of those things where I say all the time, John, as an officer, if you're in the middle of doing something and you realize, hey, this is goofy, I need to stop doing what I'm doing, I need to reevaluate, re that's okay. You have to give yourself permission to take a second and go, okay, this isn't working. I need to reevaluate and do something different. And in this case, you know, I, I'm not saying every single officer who fired a round was not judicious, but so many of them were so to the public would appear to be just out of control with what they're doing, that it was a, it was a detriment to that town rather than, than a benefit. Yeah, and I think so. I mean, we saw all the way through somebody with the rank of lieutenant firing multiple rounds into the car with officers in the backstop. And, and so listen, guys, you've got to take a moment, take a big deep breath and say, is what I'm doing smart? It, you know, we joke about that. Hey, you remember the be smart speech, right? And, and you got to just do the right thing in the moment. And what you said, Mike, the second you realize, holy cow, this is a disaster. This is, is again, a, an absolute goat rodeo going on here. I got to stop the goat rodeo and start doing smart things. So listen, uh, this one is a disaster. I hope all these officers, they just completely scrap whatever training program they have at Buffalo PD needs to just start from scratch. Bring in somebody from the outside to say, let's, let's start a professional training program on the judicious use of deadly force, and let's make thinkers before we make shooters. These guys were neither. We need to do a better job in covering our ass.